Welcome to World Challenge 2008. Landlocked Paraguay, one of the poorest nations in Latin America, where agriculture is dominated by large farms and the prospects for small farmers are bleak. Now there's a school teaching practical trades and techniques for boosting production. The real surprise is that the students are generating enough income to pay for the running of the school. This is a story of education that pays for itself. Agriculture employs over half of Paraguay's workers, but the majority of smallholders have failed to benefit from a boom in demand for soybeans, particularly from China. Hundreds of official reported cases of eviction testify to smallholders being forced out by the new crop. Can one person's vision change the lot of the smallholder in Paraguay? Martin Bert, who was mayor of the capital, Asuncion, from 1996 to 2000, has a vision of how the poor can cash in on the boom in demand for soy and other agricultural products. No es las cosas que tienen que tener las personas. It is not the possessions that people should have, it's the knowledge. The question is how we can sustainably teach the rural poor what they need to know, not just in Paraguay, but in other poor countries as well. No solamente en Paraguay, sino en todos los países pobres. Martin's time as mayor of the capital city showed him that the government would need help from the private sector to get things going. He started the first microcredit scheme in Paraguay. Para que desarrollen los pueblos, no es suficiente. As mayor, I realized that development cannot be brought about by public policy alone. A top-down approach can help install the right legal frameworks and policies, but the development of the people has to be bottom-up. It has to be in the hands of everyone, from people at an individual level, a family level and a community level. Asuncion Street Markets a microcredit scheme he created in the city planted an idea. His dream was to set up a school for the next generation of rural smallholders to teach sustainable farming methods. But could it be done without support from the government? The Chaco in northern Paraguay. It makes up 60% of the country, an area the size of Britain. It's Latin America's equivalent of the savanna, with unpredictable rainfall and poor soils. Maricel Merlo is 17. She's a student at the Escuela Agricola. Today she is visiting her family in the Chaco. There's a proud welcome for the daughter determined to improve her lot in life. I was never going to stay here. I always strived to do well in class. I did not care about going hungry. What was important was to study. That was my dream. Maricel used to go to the local school. Despite its rural poverty, Paraguay boasts a literacy rate of 95%. What Martin Bert believes is that literacy alone will not help people like Maricel to get on in life. They need vocational training as teenagers, and that's why he started the Escuela Agricola. Unfortunately, education in Paraguay, like in many poor nations, is limited to repeating like parrots from memory the lessons in the curriculum. And what is worse is that they often learn stuff that will never be useful in their lives, like the kings of Persia or the wars of Greece. They do not teach you how to improve your life. They teach you the basics, but not what you need to develop or how to get ahead and to make the most of your abilities in the future. After three years at Martin's school, Maricel is confident that her specialized skills will help improve the lot of her family. We have an orchard, but it is not well planned because my parents do not have the right knowledge. Look at this maze. The soil is no good for it. These vegetables have not been planted properly either. The soil needs to be improved. 
tenía que hacer. They need to be planted in two rows with fertilizer, with organic manure in a seedling tray before planting here. Y plantar ahí. Esta escuela está dirigida a las. Our school targets the poorest of the poor, and our aim is to change peasants into rural entrepreneurs. En emprendedores rurales. So how does Martin's school achieve this transformation from smallholder to entrepreneur? 6 a.m. Roll call at the Escuela Agricola. This is one school that's full of surprises. Those of you on cleaning duty, please make sure you do a good job. A general cleanup to start the day, and then it's off to a very particular set of classes. I have learned many things here. We did insemination and vaccination. Perhaps one day I can become a vet. We are strapping up our mare because we have visitors today. I love the animal section. I like animals and I have been studying here for a year and a half. I have learned a lot about how to improve production and how to keep the orchard growing healthy produce all the time. The school has 150 students between the ages of 15 and 17. There's a special emphasis on involving the girls. We made a strong investment in a progressive sexual education curriculum so that our female students can feel confident, secure and protected. It is amongst young rural adolescent females that the dollar-for-dollar dollar investment in education achieves the most rewarding results. The surprises don't end there. Meals come from the school's farm and everything is produced, it's claimed, with sustainable principles applied. Here we process all the milk from our farm. We make cheese. We also make yogurt. We make milk toffee and fruit jams. Our products are sold in the city and shops organized by the school. Nearby, the school shop sells the students' produce from the orchards and the dairy factory, teaching them the basic principles of marketing and accounting. A small hotel on the premises run by the students adds tourism to the curriculum. Visitors from schools in the city are regular customers. City visitors often see much more mature students, very well prepared, who work in agriculture, not as poor peasants, but in an atmosphere of modernity, prosperity and wealth. For some reason, the official curriculum of the Ministry of Education avoids how to teach kids how to earn money. We believe that teaching how to save, to invest and to earn money is very important in real life and this school teaches them that. And that is the biggest surprise of the Escuela Agricola. The students and their teachers are responsible for generating all its income. The school has an operating budget of $300,000 per year, and that is what teachers and students generate through our educational projects. The kids learn how to do things, how to discover, how to learn, and they also learn how to earn money. Martin Bert's educational revolution is already producing results. Carlos Rodriguez was a graduate of the class of 2004. Destined at best for a job as a ranch hand, Carlos was hired after graduating as manager of a large commercial ranch. My responsibilities include the sale and delivery of ranch produce. I am also in charge of the registers and the journal of the ranch's activities. In 
In 20 years, we could take the entire population of chronically poor and unemployed peasants and provide them with the knowledge, provide them with the experience and give them the hope to become entrepreneurs. No todos van a salir propietarios de una pequeña empresa, pero serán emprendedores en sus vidas. Martin Bert now wants to expand the idea of education that pays for itself around the world through his organization Teach a Man to Fish. In Paraguay alone, his school has already seen over 500 graduates help themselves to a better future. We need to break the vicious cycle of poverty with a vaccine, with the antidote of knowledge, the knowledge that provides that poor kid in South America or Africa with the belief to say, yes, I can.